Now, homemade, homemade. scripture hmm. are scriptures that not even God <laughs> have. That's right. So they homemade. That's right. They came out of the mind of somebody, yeah. but not the mind of God. Yes. Like some parents, when we were coming up, <laughs> when the children didn't want to eat all their food, some parents say, now, the Bible says, waste not, want not. Yeah. There ain't a half a scripture that ever made no such statement. No. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> Old wives favorites. Old wives favorites. Amen. Waste not, want not. <laughs> now, this is a big one here. Mm -hmm. The scripture that says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. <laughs> An old wives fable said, listen, it's a sin to go to bed angry. Ain't no Bible said that. No. So I said, what? Listen, I went to bed angry, woke up through the night angry, went back to sleep angry, and woke up when the sun came up angry. That's right. In the book of Ephesians chapter 4. I better explain that. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Let me strip that apart. Uh, you know, because I'm pretty sure many of us still have these old wise fables old wise in fables. us. And one of the requirements that's recommended before you physically work out mm -hmm. is going through a detox. That's right. Clean your system out. That's right. So you don't mind if we detox you. Amen. Amen. If you don't want to be detoxed, we're going to run that junk out of you anyway. Amen. All right. Let's have it. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 26. What is it? Be ye angry and <laughs> sin not. Be ye angry. Mm -hmm. That gave me permission, permission to be angry. That's right. God gave me permission, be but there's a certain kind of anger yeah. that he allowed. Be ye angry. That means you allow to be angry and sin but not. But now you got to go against your will while you're emotional. That's right. That's right. That's right. What a combination. <laughs> Amen. Because the Lord know anger yeah. ignites sin. That's right. It's almost inseparable. That's right. Huh? That's right. Now here come God. Amen. Glory to God. What is he teaching the church? Discipline. Yes. So when he said, be ye angry, be ye angry. that means he's given us permission yeah. to show your displeasure about something. That's right. But it's a cap on it. Be ye angry and sin not. Be angry, mm -hmm. but don't get into self. That's right. He only allow you to be angry. Yes. But on his terms, That's think right. of it. Think of it. He allow you to be angry in a manner that only satisfy him. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. You know, because flesh get angry. Mm -hmm. Come on. This is after. This is after we. <laughs> Am I right, I said? That's right. <laughs> That's right. Now, he that is soon angry. Glory to God. In the book of Proverbs 14 and verse Let's 17. Read Proverbs 14, 17, then we go back to Ephesus. He that is soon angry. He that get angry quick. Dealeth foolishly. He dealeth foolishly. And one of the qualifications of an elder, which an elder. is a bishop, is not soon not angry. Not soon angry. It didn't say he can't get angry. No. It says not soon, meaning God forbid you to be quick tempered. That's right. Amen. That's right. Now let's go back to Ephesus chapter and verse again. Back in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 26. What is it? Be ye angry. Be ye angry. And sin not. Now, when he says don't sin, that means I can't sin in no form while I'm angry. That's right. Don't limit it down to Express, expressing your anger physically and sinning. No. That's right. It says sin not. Sin not. That means I can't say nothing in my mind or think anything the thought that of makes me sin. That's right. Because if I'm angry, it triggers thoughts. Thoughts. So now, mm. he, that's why I said this is a workout because our mind, soul, body, and spirit yeah. must be conditioned. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Go ahead. Must be conditioned in following the statutes, the precepts, the orders of God. That's right. Now listen at this. Be ye angry and sin not. Now, let's first get the mind. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 24 and verse 9. Says what? The thought of foolishness. The thought 
The very thought of foolishness is sin. The thought of foolishness. Somebody say, you know, since I've been sanctified and holy, God cleaned me up. I used to be a cussing something, but God took all the curse words out of my mouth. But is it in your mind? That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 <laughs> the very thought. The thought of foolishness is sin. So. If I get angry, mm. I cannot think no ill That's right. against you. Because the Holy Ghost said, the Holy Ghost thinketh no evil. no evil. No evil. So if the Holy Ghost thinketh no evil, I have to be ministered to with the word that the word may condition yeah. my mind that I may have the mind of Christ. That's right. For me to have the mind of Christ, I must be exposed to the constant thinking mm. of Christ. That's right. And if I'm exposed to the constant thinking of Christ, he reprogrammed how I think. That's right. That's right. Now, in order for me to be reprogrammed, I must willingly let this mind offer yeah. my mind. That's right. Let's go down to Philippi. In the book of Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. What's the first word? Let. Hold up. Amen. Let. The moment said let, that means I must volunteer yeah. willingly That's right. give my mind yeah. over to the how God think and then willingly mm. allow God's thoughts mm. take over my kernel mind until it remove all the carnality. That's In other right. words, the mind of God is a divine mental detox to our mind. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Let this Let mind. Let this mind. You Let see, this you, mind you're here you. this afternoon and you're watching all around the world. When the Bible says present your body as a living sacrifice, one of the things you got to offer is your mind. That's right. One scripture says, get rid of your mortal mind. Let go from the mortal thought. Do you hear this? In the book of Estrus, 2nd Estrus chapter 14. 2nd Estrus. Chapter 14. The 14th chapter. And verse 14. What should we do? Let go from the mortal thought. No, hold on to it. Let go from the mortal thought. Let go from the mortal thought. Mortal, fleshy, carnal way of thinking cast away the burdens of man cast away the burdens of man put off now the weak nature put off Hallelujah. the Hallelujah. weak nature and say mm -hmm. <laughs> somebody to say what's the weak nature? the weak nature look at yourself oh yeah this is a weak nature that's right that's why glory to god god established a new birth yeah he want to switch your nature. That's right. When you're born again, you take on a new nature. That's right. So you got to repent of your sins. And when you repent of your sins, you are repenting for the performance of the weak nature. The weak nature. And now you need the Holy Ghost, which is the power of God, to strengthen the weak nature from weakness to strength. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. So you have to get rid of all of these wise fables. Let's go back to the book of Ephesians. I got to finish that up because I got some more fables to straighten out. Back in Ephesians 5 and verse 26. What is it? Be ye angry and sin not. All right, you can be angry, but no sin is allowed involved. You can't think it. Yes. You can't feel it. Yeah. You can't say it. That's right. You can't do it. Mm -hmm. I say you can't think it. Yeah. You can't say it. Mm -hmm. You can't feel it. Yeah. You can't do it. Anything. That come under the heading of sin, sin while you're angry. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Now hold it. Oh, amen. When it said, "Don't let the sun yeah. go down on your wrath,", your wrath. that don't now, that don't mean it's a sin to go to bed angry. No. Let us just define what happens when the sun go down, That's right. and let us define what happens when you're in a state of anger. Anger. When the sun go down, a shadow is cast upon the earth. That's right. So when the word of God said, don't let the sun mm -hmm. go down upon your right. wrath, or don't let the sun go down while you're in this state, yeah. don't let your light 
Go out. That's right. What do you mean? Don't die. Yeah. In this predicament. That's right. Because when the sun go down, darkness fall. Yeah. When your light go out of your life, darkness right. falls over your earth. That's right. Over your whole body. That's right. And if you die in that predicament, you're lost. Yeah. But if I fall asleep in that predicament, I'm not lost because I can wake up and repent. That's right. Wonderful. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. Glory to God. Wonderful. All right. Back Let's in, get some more of the fables now. What it said? Back in 1 Timothy 4 and verse 7. What is it? But refuse profane and old wives' fables. Old wives' old fables. Wives Waste fables. not, want not. Want not. Don't let the, the sin to go to bed angry. Yeah. Teeth fall out your mouth, put it under a pillar. That's right. That's right. I'm old fool fairy. Wives' going to fables. Come. <laughs> Amen. That's right. Amen. Children believe that to this day. Yeah, they believe it. I want you children that are watching. <laughs> Amen. If you lose any teeth and you put it under your pillow. Yeah. And your mama or daddy told you it was a tooth fairy. <laughs> listen to the old troublemaker now. Amen. It's just a lie. That's right. Well, Pastor Jennings, I woke up. Some money was under there. It either came from your mother <laughs> or your lying father. <laughs> That's right. Old wives, old wives fables. Easter bunny. Yeah. Old wives fables. Old wives. Santa Claus. That's right. Old wives fables. That's right. I, when I came up, I was told if you count twelve stars up in the sky and go around a corner, you see a coffin. Amen. I tried it. Amen. <laughs> I tried it. Yeah. The street that we used to live on was between two large streets. Old York Road, which is a major street in Philadelphia, and Broad Street. Mm -hmm. And I remember as a child, I it was a beautiful summer night, and the stars was out. And I count 12 stars <laughs> and ran down Old York Road and looked. No coffin. Mm -hmm. And I concluded I was down the wrong street. <laughs> so I ran up the Broad Street. And when I didn't see no coffin down the street or up the street, I realized I was suckered. <laughs> Never counted the stars again. Amen. Old wives old fable. Old wives fable. When, this, is, this is one old wives fable that probably came from the south. I don't know. That when, a, when you see a dove mm. land on your windowsill, mm. that means somebody died. Mm. If that's the case, you better have a bunch of birds on your windowsill. <laughs> that's right. People die every second of the day. That's right. Old wives old fable. Wives so parents... Fables. You have to go back and investigate. Yeah. And if you got to undo the years of fables that you told your children yeah. and correct them and let them know, listen, I didn't know no better. That's right. I was deceived because a lot of information that's passed through the years is hand-me-down information. That's right. Another old wise fable. Yeah. Bow your head and raise your hand. That's right. Except old wives. Christ, fables. that's old. Old. Oh, you, 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 you're a student of that word. Right, I'm very familiar with that, Pastor. Amen. Another old wise fable uh, that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you are saved right. right then. Right then. Bible didn't say that. No. Bible said if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, yeah. that he rose from the dead, thou shalt be. be saved. Shall it didn't say you are. No. Shall it be. says you shall, shall be, be, which lets you know you got some more to do. That's right. Old wise fable. Old wise. Repeat a sinner's prayer. Yeah. So there's a lot of fables that been out. Oh, yeah. And the word of God debunks them all. But refuse. Do what? But refuse. Give chapter and verse. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. Listen at this. But refuse. Reject. Profane and old profane. wise fables. We're right back at it again. That's right. One scriptures warn us about old wise fables. Old wise fables. And now the apostles come along and tell us how to deal with it. But refuse. Reject. Profane and old wise profane. fables. Profane. And old wise fables. And exercise thyself. Ex Amen. Exercise yourself. Rather unto godliness. Now, somebody may say, well, Pastor Jenner, you said earlier about you want to exercise your mind. Yeah. Give me Hebrews. Yeah. When you exercise your mind, you exercise your senses. That's your senses. That's, eh? right. That's right. Someone say, what? Oh, yes. That's right. You know, you have your senses. 
That's need right. exercise because, yes. you know, I, God gave you five senses. Yes. And uh, you better give me the Old Testament yeah. about the, the, operations the operations of God. That's right. And let's get the senses first. I know your hands is busy everywhere. Amen. But so much is coming to my mind now. I want you to follow me and hear me. I want to have a good workout this afternoon. First in the book All of right, Hebrews. All right, follow me in the book of Hebrews. Chapter because five. most people don't even know that these scriptures even exist. That's true. Talking about the physical and the spiritual part of the body. That's right. All right. In Hebrews chapter 5, we'll start at verse 13. Now, I know the Bible says bodily exercise profiteth little. That's right. It didn't say it didn't profit nothing. No, bodily exercise profiteth little. Give chapter and verse. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8. So I have to take you on a higher level of your workout. That's right. It profits little. 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 It don't do nothing for salvation. No. So he may do something in his natural life. Yeah. A little. A little. But spiritually, yeah. I have to teach you how to lift scripture. That's right. In a orderly fashion. That's right. So you don't dislocate nothing. That's right. Amen. That's right. You know, you can lift weights. Yeah. Because you overestimate yourself. Yeah. And underestimate the weight. Lift it too fast, right. injure yourself. Right. Glory right. be to God. That's right. You can overestimate yourself spiritually. Yeah. Yeah. Running too fast, yeah. injure yourself. Right. Take too many matters in your own hands yeah. that you're not capable of handling. That's right. Are you getting me? That's right. Listen. Now in the book of Hebrews chapter 5 and we'll start at verse 13. Says what? For everyone that useth milk. Everyone. Everyone. That use milk. Is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Hold it. Why? For he is a babe. You see, you don't find no baby hmm. bench pressing 100 pounds. No way. Two-year-old baby bench pressing 100 pounds. That's not going to happen. No. Well, if you are a babe in Christ, mm -hmm. that's why it says everyone that use milk, milk is, is unskillful, unskillful in the word in of the righteousness. Word. That's right. In, in the, the word. word. In the word. What you mean? This is a spiritual baby. Yeah. You're unskillful in the word. Mm -hmm. So if you just repented of your sins, been baptized in the water in the name of Jesus Christ, and just received the Holy Ghost, or still seeking it, still. you obey. That's right. So being that you're unskillful in the word of righteousness, righteousness. you're not qualified. You don't have the spiritual mental capacity, right. nor do you yet have the divine vocabulary mm. to express and properly decipher and explain the wisdom of God in the form of scripture. That's right. And because you are a babe, you are not yet able mm. or capable to witness to nobody. That's right. Unskilled. How are you going to bring somebody to Christ when you know you, you trying to get there yourself? That's right. Learn first. Learn. When a baby can't talk, mm -hmm. the mother and father teach it to say words. That's right. Learn, Learn. daddy, mommy, <laughs> That's right. daddy. And the parents constantly repeat it. Yeah. And the parents don't teach it difficult words. That's right. That's right. The parents teach it words that's easy to be formed in the mouth. That's right. Why would you try to take on difficult scriptures Preacher. and you just obey? That's right. Trying to explain it yeah. and you're not capable. Not, that's right. In other words, you're goo goo gag -ga over the scripture. <laughs> that's right. And that's why many men are in the pulpit. Yeah. Once the scripture is read, the explanation is and people is like, say what? <laughs> that's right. What, what is that? What is that? The scripture is too heavy. That's right. Huh? That's right. Hey, your, your mouth must be formed. Yeah. You got to be in season. Yes. To speak a word yeah. to them that are weary. You got to know how, how to, to speak it. it. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling? The Lord God has given me the tongue of listen, the learned. Listen. Listen. In the book of Isaiah chapter 50 and at verse 4. Glory to God. The Lord God has given me. Who gave it? The Lord God. Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. God. The Lord God has given me. He has given me the tongue of the learned. Where your tongue got to come from? The Lord God. And when He give you a tongue, what does it consist of? Has given me the tongue of the learned. Hold it, of the learned. Of the learned. Of the learned. That's right. Not gave me the tongue of learning. No, of the learned. 
if he gave me the tongue of the learned, that means what he put in my mouth, it, the information is there, That's right. and the understanding is there so I can express what's in my mouth. That's right. That's right. Huh? Do you see the language of scripture? Amen. Giving me the tongue of the learned. Of the learned. Of the learned. And that I should know how to speak that the word. That I should hold it mm. to God. Hallelujah. That I should know how. That I should know how to speak a word. Speak a word. In season to Wait him a that is weary. Speak a word where? In season. And then the apostle instruct Timothy, be instant. Yes. In season. In season. Out of season. Out of season. So that I may know how to speak a word. In season. That means you have to speak it at the right time. That's right. At the right place. That's right. About the right thing. That's right. Before the right people. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. In season. In season. Glory be to God. That I should know how to speak a word in know season. Know how to do it. That's right. Know how. That's right. So one must be taught yeah. how to express mm. the intelligence of God. That's right. That's right. Know how. Know how. Oh, yeah. Take your time. Yes. Make it plain. That's right. That's right. Be very precise yes. in your explanation of your interpretation of scripture. That's right. Don't run ahead of the spirit. Yeah. Stay within the confines of the book. That's right. If, if, if you bring up history, tell the people. Yeah. The Bible didn't say this. Yeah. History said this. That's right. That way you don't have the people stringing along looking for what you're talking about when it's not in there. That's right. That's right. Now do you see what I'm telling you? That I should know how to speak a know word. Know how in to do it. Amen. When the preacher come and tell you it's five minor prophets and five major, mm -hmm. you won't find that. No. So if you're wise here, say history teacher. That's right. Paul died at Nero's chopping block. There ain't in no Bible. No. History teacher. Mm -hmm. Peter crucified head down and feet up. There ain't in no Bible. History teacher. That's right. The church started 33 AD. There ain't in no Bible. No. History teaching. That's right. You see what I'm talking? That's right. So there are things that history teach yeah. about scripture mm -hmm. that the scripture don't back up. That's but right. when God say a thing, yeah. it is written, yeah. God make manifest his, his word through, through preaching. preaching. God make manifest his, his, word his word through preaching. Right. So when you step outside of the word yeah. and don't preach the word, you ain't preaching. That's right. Because if he say he make manifest his word through preaching, through preaching, and you preaching everything else but the word, that's right. Then God is not manifesting Himself mm -hmm. out of you. Preach the word. That's right. Do what? Preach the word. How? Be instant in season, out of season. And if we preach the word, what else come with it? Reprove. Reproof. Rebuke, Rebuke, exhort, exhort with all long suffering and you will suffer and you'll bring the doctrine. For the time will come and when the they will time not endure sound doctrine. That they won't, hallelujah, bless God. Hallelujah. They won't endure sound teaching, but what? But after their own lust. Oh, they too caught up in their own lust. Shall they heap to themselves teachers? Shall they teachers. gather, heap to themselves, meaning they're going to gather to themselves, to themselves and they are teachers. Having itching ears. They what? Having itching ears. They what? Having itching ears. Hold it. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Itching ear is itching not when your ear, you scratch it. No. Uh-uh. No. You know when you, when you itch mm. naturally, there's something that's bothering you. <laughs> that's right. And you resort to a measure to get rid of the itch. That's right. A itching ear, an itching ear. is an ear that's interested. Mm -hmm. Whatever it's being heard in that ear, yeah. it itches the ear. It triggers the hearing of the ear and draw the ear to the information. That's right. That's they have itching ears, itching ears about what? And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. But what they're hearing is not truth. And shall be because the purpose of, listen, when you get an itch, it's a distractor from what you're doing. That's right. Huh? That's right. So if you got it, you know, if you read the scripture, right. you, know, you listen to the word and all of a sudden you got an itch, you look them down. It's a distraction. That's right. An itching ear. Itching ear. Glory to God. Amen. As when you hear something. Yeah. That's not the truth. 
and now it sparked your ear. That's right. It's a distraction that's, from the truth. That's right. And if you listen to it long enough, that means that itch begins to linger. Yeah. And the longer it linger, you start to turn from the truth that you hear. That's right. What did he say? And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. They're going to do what? And they shall turn away. they turning away their ears they from the truth. Ears because they itch is so great. That's right. That's right. Having itching ears. You, your ears. Here, 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 here now. Amen. You better leave these social media devils alone. That's right. Amen. That's right. You watch all these devils and fake preachers. It doesn't matter because they call church of the Lord Jesus Christ. No. The devil went in that business before I was born. That's right. That's One scripture right. says, all that say they Israel is not Israel. Not Israel. Everything that's called Church of the Lord Jesus Christ don't represent the Lord Jesus Christ at all. That's right. <laughs> don't be tricked because somebody baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And have, they teach the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. They ain't all of it. No. That's just the introduction to the faith. That's right. The Bible says in Acts 2, 42, yeah. they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Right. And Paul went among the Hebrews yeah. in the sixth chapter, I believe, of the book of Hebrews. And at verse 1. Says what? Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine yeah. of Christ. All right, you that are watching, that are baptizing, you that are here, that go to some apostolic church. <laughs> That's right. Apples and stolics. Amen. And uh, you baptize in the name of Jesus Christ and uh, have the genuine Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Yeah. And you say, I'm on my way to heaven. Are you? Are you? Oh, you are? Hmm. Let's check out your journey. <laughs> That's right. The Bible says what? Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ. After I repent of my sins and go down in water in the name of Jesus Christ, receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I have to move on from that. That's right. Leaving the leaving principles. Leaving the principles of the doctrine the of Christ. Leaving the beginning stages of the doctrine of Christ. Let us go Let on. Let us go on. Unto perfection. In order for me to go on to perfection or go on to completion. Yeah. I got to have a complete teaching. That's right. In other words, physically, when you start working out, months turn to years, yeah. you start seeing development. That's right. But if you baptize and have the Holy Ghost and you're not getting no teaching, yeah. there's no spiritual development. That's right. Once you begin to understand yeah. what teaching really is yeah. and what preaching really is and your understanding come open. You see, when you teach the word of God, you are a scriptural surgeon. That's right. Rightly dividing the word of truth, you cut the scriptures rightly. That's right. You know, if I got a whole pie and uh, I got Byron there, and Lorenzo there, and Lewis there, and uh, they say, Pastor, yeah, I want some of that sweet potato pie. Mm -hmm. You want some? I said, No, I don't want no. One whole pie. For three brothers. Yeah. So I cut it in thirds. That's right. Lorenzo get one. Mm -hmm. Byron get one. Lewis get one. There's nothing less left. That's right. What I did, I rightly. Rightly divided. Divided it. Rightly divided. So distribution <laughs> would be given out evenly. And that way, my brothers don't come lacking. That's right. Blessed be God. That's right. Eh? That's right. The preacher must rightly divide, rightly divide. the sayings of the prophets mm -hmm. and the sayings of the apostles. That's right. You cannot rightly cut the sayings of the prophets or the apostles if you don't understand what did they say. That's right. So therefore... Even distribution hmm. of information, yeah. of knowledge, yeah. cannot be given out. Right. So then you have a congregation that becomes lacking in knowledge. Right. And if you lack in knowledge, you lack in growth. If you lack in growth, you lack in development. If you lack in development, you lack in know-how. No, that's right. I don't care how much you want to live holy. That's right. You got to develop first. That's right. So you can master that lifestyle. That's right. 